You ready? You're listening to The Real Pineapple Podcast Network. checking this out i've got a review for i think one of the most underrated comedies of all time and it's personally one of my favorite comedies of all time in the cable guy which is written by lou holtz jr and directed by that's crazy that's his only screenwriting credit that i'm seeing here on rotten tomatoes but and it's directed by this little guy uh you might know named ben stiller who i want to say the year prior did reality bites which is crazy that you have uh yeah that you have reality bites and okay two years prior you have reality bites and this movie you direct both of them and both films of age shockingly well especially when you look at how social media affects our daily life and everything but this of course stars jim carrey and so let, let's roll this back a little bit because when you think about Jim Carrey, you know, you think about The Mask, you think about, you know, Ace Ventura as far as the comedies. But I think people really do forget how big of a risk this was because Jim Carrey does Ace Ventura Pet Detective. He does that in 94 and he does The Mask uh, and uh, Dumb and Dumber, all 94. Uh, say what you will. That is one of the best years of any comedic actor ever, if not the best year. It's insane that he had all three of those films hit in the same year. So he has that in 94. Then he does Batman Forever. And I don't think I've actually reviewed Batman Forever. Batman Forever, I think, is actually better than people give it credit for. Give me the the Schumacher cut. Give, Give me that, what is it, three hours plus Give me that Batman Forever. I'm horribly curious to see what that would look like. But does Batman Forever, mixed reaction, uh, admittedly. And then he does uh, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls later that year. And Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. I I, I dig that movie. Are there some uh, problematic elements? Absolutely. Is it still funny? Yeah. Multiple things can be true. So then that takes us to 96. So that really was a risk for him to take such a dark comedy in something like the cable guy and let's let's be clear this is a dark dark fucking comedy um i actually just showed this to my partner uh, a couple days ago she had never seen it and she was just sitting there the whole time going wow this is way darker than i was expecting and honestly that's one of my favorite things about it so just jumping in here matthew broderick uh who you know from a bunch of stuff uh, but Matthew Broderick, um, <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about him running over a kid, but never mind. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just move past that. But Matthew Broderick plays a uh, Stephen, and he is dating uh, Leslie Mann's Robin, and I love Leslie Mann. Uh, quick, qu- real quick, before I dive too deep in here, gotta give Leslie Mann her roses because she's just or her flowers, roses, whatever. Between Blockers, between Knocked Up. Between 40 year old version, between how to be single, she's an amazing comedic actress. And I know she's married to Apatow. I think a lot of people connect, you know, her with him, but she's a great actress in her own right. And she really doesn't get nearly the credit that she deserves for being as great as she is. But you know how you have those, uh, those people who pop up in a movie and you go, oh, nice. Like you get excited that they're in it. She's definitely one of those uh, actresses for me. And so to see her in this, and she gets a really, I think she gets a good meaty role given where the story goes. I I really enjoyed her in this. But uh, Stephen had asked Robin to marry him. She freaks out. Admittedly, I think a bit of an overreaction, but I also understand not wanting to live in that awkwardness because as someone who's lived with roommates when shit has gone down and, and you have to live in that space and the, 
the aura and, and just the vibe is off in the house or in the apartment or whatever. That sucks. So I, I get it from that perspective of her going, yeah, could you, you need to find your own place. So, so I do get it. But, you know, as a guy, I was like, well, like, damn, <laughs> like you asked them to move out. Shit. But Steven goes ahead and finds his own place. And what do you do when you move out? Of course, you set up your cable and Internet. So Stephen goes ahead and calls the cable company and is intro- we are introduced to Jim Carrey's cable guy. And just from Jump, one thing that I appreciate so much about this movie is one of my biggest pet peeves about getting anything set up or worked on is the time frame. Um, the, when I got my internet set up, I won't say through who because <laughs> who knows, they could be a sponsor someday, but... When they go ahead, fuck it, Charter. Um, when they, <laughs> when Charter went ahead and set up uh, internet at uh, at my partner and I's uh, place, they gave us a time frame of oh god, what was it? it? Was like between nine and noon. I was like, okay, nine and noon, totally fine. I originally was gonna go with uh, Xfinity because they were running a promotion, and they went, oh well, we would have someone there between ten and four. And I'm just like, that's that's almost a work shift. I'm not wait, I'm not waiting that fucking long. And so I, I think they even say in the movie that your cable guy will be here between like nine and six. And I just immediately laughed because I thought, yeah, that's exactly how it is. And so of course Steven's in the shower, and of course Jim Carrey's cable guy shows up. And just from jump, he's immediately busting his balls and really just the microaggression of of Steven being like, well, dude, I, you know, I, you, you're supposed to be here between this time. So cable guy goes, oh, I'm late. And he goes, yeah. And he's like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have come at all. Jerk off. And he said it just like that. And, <laughs> and credit to Matthew Broderick because his facial expressions do a lot of the lifting in this movie. I, I mean, I think the script is great, but Broderick really sells the Steven character just off of his facial expressions he does a great job and so cable guy goes ahead and gets them all set up and there's this (laughs) there's this whole sequence where he's going to uh drill into the wall to set the cable up and he makes it the most erotic uncomfortable like talk to me tell me where you like it oh you like it here bit like he's doing this shit and i'm just (laughs) I'm just sitting there watching going, oh man, if I was Steven, I would be wanting to be anywhere but in that room with him. It, it's fucking perfect. And Carrie and Broderick play that scene in particular off each other brilliantly. And earlier in the film, uh, Rick, uh, Steven's best friend, who's played by Jack fucking Black, it's Jack Black looks amazing. I fucking love Jack Black. Uh, he's he's one of my dream interviews. If you told me top 10 dream interviews, he's easily in top 10. I fucking love Jack Black. It's just crazy to see uh, very young, not bearded <laughs> Jack Black. Uh, it's, it's such a trip in the best way. But he tells Steven, hey, man, you know, if you're getting your cable set up, you know, I paid my cable guy 50 bucks and he went ahead and you know gave me all the movie channels for free and so steven brings that up uh to the cable guy and he goes on this whole tirade about how you know this should get you in prison you'd be paying a five of five uh paying a fine of five thousand dollars but he goes ahead and eventually in and you know he tells him i'm fucking with you goes ahead hooks him up and that right there is the worst mistake <laughs> that met that Steven could have possibly made because it leads to this insane one-sided most of the time friendship between the cable guy and Steven and that is really where the movie shines is once the cables installed all bets are off and it turns into basically guy single white female and it's brilliant because Steven's going through a lot of changes he's trying to go ahead and get this project done at work he doesn't want to date because he's trying to work things out with robin but robin is out there dating 
And so he's in this just a state of flux in multiple aspects of his life. And ironically enough, the one of the only stable things in his life is the unstable cable guy. He wants to go ahead and hang out with him. And the film does a great job of just just ramping up the tension little by little. Cable guy starts to do these these very subtle things that you're going, okay, that's that's weird. And I think we can we can all you know relate to the fact that there are so many times that you're in a situation where you don't realize how bad the situation is until someone points it out to you from the outside who doesn't have any sort of bias. That's when you kind of go, oh shit, this was problematic, or oh my god, this was abusive, or or, or what have you. And and th- there's this point in particular where he's uh, where the cable guy takes Steven to medieval times, which uh, medieval times is still a thing, by the way. I wasn't aware it was a thing. I actually had to Google it because I was curious. Yeah, uh, medieval times is still a thing, and uh, I'm gonna end up having to go to medieval times because that kind of seems awesome. But the big commentary that this movie is making is on uh, is the impact of television and you know you can sub in really anything you can sub in social media you can sub in you know television you could sub in uh fox news there are you know you what fill in the blank but what i actually appreciate appreciate a lot about this movie is that there's this flashback to the cable guy as a kid and any quips, not even quips, but he tells his mom, like, I thought I was going to have a little brother. And his mom, without missing a beat, goes, yeah, I know. Uh, your dad, your mom's trying to get you a little brother. That's why she's going to happy hour. And you just go, oh, shit. That puts a ton of shit in the context. Uh, the abandonment issues that the cable guy has and his longing for any sort of true human emotional connection and in the last you know kind of fight between steven and the cable guy i i love where he doesn't quite break the fourth wall but is directly talking to the audience where he when he says that you know you're never there for me mom it's a rare kind of glitch in the matrix uh, with the cable guy persona that works so well and really hammers home the point of what the film is talking about. Uh, I didn't mention it, but there's a <laughs> there's a great uh, fake trial that's occurring within the movie. It, it's very much their version of the OJ trial with these two childhood actors uh, who were twins, uh, twin brothers. One of them killed the other. And <laughs> that whole that whole bit is really funny to me because uh, I, I definitely remember uh, it's a, a Sam and Stan tweet uh, sweet, pardon me, uh, who are played by the aforementioned Ben Stiller. When, OK, so for those of you who are, you know, mid 20s, you, you probably don't remember the OJ trial as someone who grew up in the 90s the oj trial was everywhere court tv was a thing because of the oj trial and very soon after was not a thing (laughs) because of the oj trial but but that was how so many people consumed the you know these sort of these shows like snapped and you know those those sort of crime uh, those sort of you know real life crime uh shows it was through court tv and so when the OJ verdict came out, I, I still remember people at church that week talking about how, oh my God, did you watch, you know, did you watch the OJ verdict live? That was such a big deal. So the way that Stiller goes ahead and weaves that uh, into his message, I, I thought was really well done. I just want to go ahead and jump through a couple things that I, <laughs> that I really enjoyed. The, uh, oh my gosh, why am I blanking? Jim Carrey's performance of Don't You Want Somebody to Love, I think is actually one of my favorite musical uh, sequences in a movie. It's very trippy, and Stiller does a great job filming it. It feels like a fever dream in the same way that watching (laughs) too much TV 
things can start to feel like a fever dream after a while. Things don't seem real. I love that sequence and what that leads to in particular. I, I realize this movie is over, you know, <laughs> it's over like 20 years old, but I don't really care. I don't want to spoil too much of this for people because that sequence and the aftermath of that sequence, I'll say in particular, is what just makes you go, oh man, this guy is not only problematic, this guy is fucking dangerous. And it gets really dark and really disturbing the more the film goes on. I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying there's a point where Steven goes, I need to go ahead and cut this guy out of my life. So he looks him dead in the face and says, I don't want to be your friend. And from that moment on, <laughs> Steven's life gets drastically worse by the scene. And that is something that I... <laughs> <laughs> that it's it's hilarious to watch realizing that we're not Steven, but if you're living through that shit, oh my god. And Stiller does a really good job of weaving in some uh, some horror elements into the film as well, which you can definitely see uh, showcased in uh, something like Severance uh, with uh, with Adam Scott. You can definitely see the horror influences in the, in that show, which if you have not watched Severance... You need to watch Severance. I'm going to have a review up for that here at some point before the end of the year. Because I, I, I fucking adore that show. But uh, getting to my final thoughts here. This is one of those movies that I just look back on with such reverence. Not just for its message, but in its execution. There are multiple things that I didn't bring up. Again, because in case you haven't seen it, I know there are people who haven't. And it's something that I would definitely recommend to anyone it's very much a me movie. That was <laughs> that was actually the first thing my partner said after we finished it. She just looked at me and she, she went, oh, this is so, such a you movie. Meaning that as someone who really enjoys dark humor and social commentary, if you can blend those two for me, oh my God, then I'm just, I'm in heaven if you can make that work. And Stiller does an excellent job uh, directing this incredibly well-written script by uh, Lou Holtz Jr., why this is only 55% on Rotten Tomatoes makes no goddamn sense to me. It should be like an 85 at like minimum. Uh, this is a great double feature, by the way, with uh, Death to Smoochie, which if, you, if you've not seen Death to Smoochie, you should watch Death to Smoochie. It's fucking awesome, and I'm going to review that at some point for sure because I love that movie as well. But this is a solid A for me. I, I just, I love this movie, and there is... Uh, there's so much to break down on that, and there's so much to reflect on with the film. So it's on Netflix as of this recording. So if you have not seen The Cable Guy, take the, like, it's like 95 minutes. Take 95 minutes, watch this shit. It is well worth your time. But The Cable Guy, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Let us know in the comments. You can go ahead and follow us pretty much everywhere you listen to podcasts soundcloud apple google podcasts podbean stitcher iHeartRadio, spotify amazon music tune up and samsung podcasts at the real pineapple go ahead and shoot me an email let me know what you think of the show if you have any questions for the show any suggestions on reviews go ahead and shoot them over to me you can reach me at jhunter at therealpineapple.com you can follow me on letterbox at black shazam you can follow me on TikTok at J Hunter Real Pineapple, as well as on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can find me on Blue Sky as well at J Hunter Real Pineapple, and uh, you can find everywhere that the show is, including Facebook at uh, linktr.ee slash J Hunter Real Pineapple. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, just go ahead and search The Real Pineapple, and we'll go ahead and, and uh, show up there. Go ahead and subscribe, as I'm going to go ahead and... So, uh, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, or I mentioned it. I definitely have mentioned it, but uh, I was going to hop on Twitch. Uh, my, f uh, my friend who is working on the graphics, some stuff occurred, and so we're kind of going back and forth. But as we head to October, I will be streaming at some point in October. Probably going to start with streaming Alan Wake. But I will go ahead and keep y'all updated on that. I will be streaming in October. I promise that will be happening. But everyone, thank you so much for listening. Stay safe out there. Take care of each other. And don't forget, as always, to keep it real. Ooh.